Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. Today we're going to have even more fun in the workshop. Today we're going to make something called distressed wood. What we're going to do today is take this piece of, it's basically a piece of scrap wood, and we're going to use all of these implements and some more, and we're going to make a distressed piece, and then we're going to apply some finishes to it so that we can see some comparisons of what it looks like. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term distressed wood, basically it just, some people call it antiquing, and what it is is we take brand new wood, but we make it look like it's old. And the purpose is not to try and deceive anybody that this is an antique piece. The purpose is to make a feature piece for something because anybody who knows anything about woodworking or about furniture uh, they'll be able to spot a fake piece in a minute so the purpose is to make a special feature piece and to make it give it the style if you will uh, the style of of an antique piece now one of the places that you may have run across distressed wood is if you've ever been looking for picture frames. Now this looks like an old picture frame or a picture frame that was made from uh, old wood, old painted wood because they've taken it and they've scratched it, painted it and scratched it uh, and just kind of made it look old and worn. But when you turn it over and you look at it, you know that this is brand new because this is being made with air staples and look at all the brand new hardware that they're using on this. So this is a perfect example. In this case they've used uh, paint to distress to make it and it's pretty easy with just with paint you can make different layers of it uh, we're going to do something a little bit more challenging because we're not going to be painting it we're just going to be using a top coat so that we do a, a natural wood distress what we do is we basically mark the wood and we're scratching or scraping and what we're exposing is the cross grain and when you expose the cross grain more of the dye or stain or whatever it is will often soak into it so it stands out it makes it a little bit darker and that's what makes distressed or antique looking furniture. The first thing I'm going to do is put some dents in and I'm going to use this chain. I found that a mechanics vise works best so I'm just going to go along here and make some dents along here and that's all this is for is just to kind of dent the wood at different places just to give it a little bit of effect. Okay I've done the put the chain on there but you know what it's a little hard to see unless you get the right light but you know there's no reason that you couldn't use a hammer to do the same thing. Uh, I think a hammer might even, might even be a better way of doing it uh, but of course you don't want to uh, crack the wood so you have to be careful with that. Uh, but the next thing we're going to do is just a series of, of things and you know what we basically want to scratch against the wood. So there's different things that we can do and I'm just going to do some um, some scratches at different points because we're going to be putting some finishes at different areas so we want to see what these things look like with different finishes on too and then we can scrape that I do have some ebony dye. I could put, in fact, we'll put a little bit of ebony dye in a few spots just to see what it's going to look like. It's a little dark. Now another thing we can do to add a little bit of color is to just burn the wood and we can control this in a variety of ways. We can do a, a very hot spot or we can just give a light tanning to something and if we go too much with this the nice thing with this is we can do the same thing we did with the ebony dye and that is to take the sandpaper, turn that down a bit and we're going to want to do this anyway and just give that a little bit of a rub like that so that it doesn't we may not want this stain like this we may just want a little bit of a tone 
that uh, you can see the difference of a, of a dye and a little bit of burning. Now the first thing I'm going to apply is the stain, but what I wanted to show you before I mix this up anymore, do you see that globby mess in there? That's dirt. It's actually, stains are ground up rock, and the reason they work great on fence boards is because ultraviolet light doesn't affect them like it can uh, a dye. And I'm just going to mix this up now, and I'm going to apply that. And that's one of the reasons that I don't use stains very often like this, is because they tend to mask the wood. They're great for outdoors, and they're good for some indoor projects, uh, but I prefer to use dyes so that it uh, allows the, the texture of the wood to come through. Okay, well, I painted the amber dye on there, and unfortunately I forgot to turn the camera on. Uh, but you can see what that looks like, and it's uh, not quite dry yet, but uh, it's pretty close. And there is the shellac. I just got finished uh, painting some shellac on there uh, with the brush, and it's not quite dry yet either. Uh, when we come back, all of these will be dry, and we'll compare them and see what they look like. Okay, so there's our results. Very fascinating. Uh, and this is all done on red alder. And you can see the stain, and you can see how the stain at the bottom tends to mask. It even has masked over top of the felt pen that I wrote on there, but it's kind of masked everything. It overlays that earthen quality, uh, overlays over top, but you can still see some of the cross grain highlights. The amber, of course, is a bit more translucent, and it shows through a little bit more. I would have thought it would have been a little bit more pronounced on the cross grain, but that's what it is. Um, I actually like the shellac the best in, in this instance. Uh, it didn't mask anything. That um, Everything seems pretty clear, although the felt pen, it did because of the alcohol in the shellac, it mussed that up a bit. But I like how the cross grain is a little bit more pronounced, and, and even the burning uh, is a bit more pronounced. So um, this one, actually a cross between those two, I think for me would be perfect. But with these things, there's no right or wrong. It's just experimenting. Well, and that concludes my video on working with distressed wood. And I've never done an experiment like this, so it's interesting to see the kinds of results and what happens, because now you can apply these things and you may use different things different techniques on different pieces, um, and it's just nice to see what kind of results you can expect with this. Don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed, we ask you to do that and follow us on all the uh, social medias. We're going to be doing this in the near future. We're going to, going to be making a distressed piece, so you want to stay tuned for that. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.